Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. Here's what the weather map looks like for this Wednesday afternoon. We've got a little weather system moving through the Mississippi River Valley, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. That's producing some thunderstorm activity. And further back, a little bit of snow being reported in the Ozarks. Let me give you the state boundaries. I'm sure that'll help a little bit. There you go. Now it looks like a plain old weather map. Anyway, let's head to that surface chart. And we will jump right into what's happening across the U.S. Things are dominated by this large polar high coming in from Saskatchewan, moving into North Dakota. Temperatures all across North Dakota this afternoon below zero. So that's quite a cold air mass. Seven degrees there at Minneapolis and coming down into the teens in Nebraska. We do have a little bit of severe weather out there from western Mississippi into East Texas. Slight risk associated with that and a couple of severe thunderstorm watches out. Storm reports for today, fortunately not showing much of anything. That line of storms right along this cold front and the back edge of that front cleared Midland coming up on Albuquerque and the tail end is right there in the Rockies. In fact, we can trace that all the way up into British Columbia. You can see the temperatures up there in the Fraser River Valley are quite mild, 20s and 30s. You go a little bit to the north and you get into the sub-zero conditions. So that is the boundary right there. Let's check out the Pacific and Alaska regions. And for that, we will pull the view over to the west. Another front coming up on British Columbia. Some Pacific polar air associated with that. And then Alaska, it is quite cold once again. A large 1036 millibar high up there in Chukotka, Siberia, bringing temperatures down well below zero across the state. In Canada, kind of a quiet day, and there's the full view showing not a whole lot going on, just kind of a westerly component to the flow. The main high pressure area in far southern Canada and temperatures quite cold across the populated regions. Where we do have some warm air is up in Greenland Temperatures almost near 40 degrees, a little warm air wedge. But up to the north, we get back into winter once again. And that's pretty much it, except for this outgoing Great Lakes system moving into the Maritimes and Maine, producing some snow once again for Ottawa, Montreal. And that should quickly clear the northeastern U.S. this evening. If we take a look at the GFS model output, there's that large blob of cold air coming down from Canada. The area of bare clinicity, upper level lift and some convection right there down to the south. And that could certainly develop into a closed cyclone. However, don't really see much of that going on. It's trying, there's a couple of closed centers by tomorrow morning here and there across the eastern U.S., but we don't really have a good closed low there. And it looks like this one little low west of Florida coming together around Saturday. Not quite pulling it together, but gradually once it moves to the east, the remainder of the front will move through the Florida region. Now, there's definitely a lot going on aloft. Let's take a look at that. This is the mid-tropospheric chart. Up at 500 millibars, what do we see? A jet in the north U.S. into the Great Lakes and a southern branch from Southern California into Texas and across the Carolinas. Jet maxes, that's going to be one right there. Looks like another one right around here. Maybe a little bit elongated. And we can also see some troughs. That's going to be a small trough, maybe a short wave. Another one right there, and 
the rest of the flow looks kind of channeled, especially up north. So that's going to be dominated by left front quadrant dynamics. That's the divergent left front quadrant. And a little bit of that going on in Texas and Oklahoma, probably helping to destabilize the atmosphere in that part of the country. And, of course, that's going to move downstream and support the stuff over Arkansas and Tennessee. But, you know, this is this morning. The weather's already unfolded. So we can bring this up and you can see the effect that those upper level dynamics have had. And certainly a lot of lift across Arkansas and Tennessee this afternoon. And that's how it looks this evening. There's all that upper level lift moving into Arkansas and Tennessee. We may have to contend with this maybe for tomorrow. Also people in the Northeast that's a large wave moving towards that area. It's kind of sheared out and it's parallel to the upper level contours. So don't let the dark colors scare you. A quick check of the integrated water vapor transport values. This is a good measure of our tendency for heavy soaking rains. That's that front that we have off of the Pacific Northwest. That'll make landfall pretty quickly tonight into tomorrow. Those IVT values coming up to about 500 to 600 in Washington, Seattle, all the way down to Portland. Rapidly falls apart moving across the mountains. Then we get into kind of a quiet period. It looks like some of that atmospheric river energy is going over the northern Rockies. Now that can be of some concern because that can lay down a lot of snow across parts of western Canada and fresh snow cover is vital for the production of arctic air masses. So we could be looking at maybe some of that recharging a bit. In fact, yeah, I can see towards the end it's bringing down another big high pressure area. That's around the 25th and 26th, so we'll we'll look at that maybe next week. And we also see, if we back this up, you can see another atmospheric river developing over Texas coming up from Mexico. This is going to be the 24th, so about five days from now. So that could prime parts of Texas and Louisiana, Arkansas with moisture. And we could even see maybe an MCS, a convective system associated with that. 24th and 25th. So let's look at the GFS and see if any of the models are going for that. Let's see, 23rd, 24th. Well, we're going to be covered by this high pressure area across the Gulf Coast. So anything that's out there is going to ride over the top of that cold dome. There it is right there that could be associated with maybe a warm front lifting up from South Texas. Maybe some embedded storm activity. The better organization definitely looks to be along the coastal regions, not so much up north. So again, we're talking about a week from now. This is going to be Monday, 24th. And then I'll probably move eastward as a squall line into Florida after a couple days. Anyway, yeah, there's some snow there. Colorado for midweek next week. That's going to be upslope flow stuff. And anything else? Well, we've got a lot of geographical area to cover, so usually I miss out on some of the events. Yep, just the high pressure area moving in. Some isentropic lift here and there along the transition zone. A couple of incursions of fresh cold air coming in. Another Alberta Clipper there for the 24th, 25th. That'll be the next big change for sure. And really, we could see a lot changing between now and the middle of next week. We could see that polar air becoming weaker. It could also just as well become stronger. We don't really know, but it will be something that we will have to monitor. And then the local satellite imagery. Are there any areas of interest? Well, let's take a look. 
the fog stratus haze or whatever this is this is kind of a weird blue color so i might zoom in on that a bit i see convective elements possibly in salt lake city also the convection in mississippi arkansas louisiana texas that'll be worth looking at and the rest of it this is just snow cover up to the north boring weather in florida and i think that's it i can see the outline of that front right there so let's zoom in and have a look yep there's the storms in texas right there from about uh, Texarkana down to Athens and south of Corsicana. And a separate line way out ahead of the front from south of Memphis to Lufkin and west of Houston. So Houston probably going to be getting some of that for rush hour. And then further up to the north, there's some of that fog and stratus coming in behind the cold front, which is running about like that. We were going to look at California, too. Let me pull that up. Because that haze and fog looked a little bit weird. I think that's just an artifact from the... Yeah, I don't know. Whatever that is, I, I don't really see it so much on the close-up, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then, let's see, we we're going to look at Utah... Yeah, I don't see any hard convective tops on that stuff, so that's just some... Yeah, that's a, that's a combination of the existing snow cover across the mountains and this little cirrus that kind of blend together right there at the end. It makes it look like kind of a big weather system. There are some clouds popping up right there towards the very end, so I think there is some upper-level lift. See that cloud field right there? That Yeah, that's upper-level lift, so... Part of this is the the chore of untangling that snowpack on the ground from the higher cirrus. And of course, one way to do that is just switch over to the infrared. And your mid and upper level clouds will stand out a little bit better. Yeah, if we back this up, you can see that that snow cover is not very cold. It just shows up as a medium gray. And then the upper level lift, that's it right there. So that's one way of separating what you're seeing there on the satellite pictures. Also, a lot of upslope flow in Denver. They're getting some snow. There you go. That's what it looks like as we record this. Snow is not too heavy. I see three miles there at Denver in snow. Two and a half at Cheyenne. And looks uh, like... The visibilities are a lot higher around that. Half a mile, though, in Colorado Springs with freezing drizzle, probably some fog mixed in with that. And I know there's some snow showers further out to the west. The front located, I think that probably crossed the mountains, running about like that. And the temperature's much warmer to the west. You can see 42 there at Montrose, contrasting with 28 to 42 well the front just passed there but anyway it does cool down quite a bit as you go to the east and warmer as you go out towards the west and there's a look at some of that storm activity in mississippi and louisiana the colder tops north of monroe louisiana there's the trend of that stuff it formed just within the past one or two hours the visible imagery, let's switch over to that. Numerous anvil clouds streaming out to the east from each of those convective cells all the way down to Houston. And you can see that coming together right there. And that'll probably be a good place to stop for today. Unfortunately, no new Patreon support. Kind of figured me putting my face out there would help with some of that. Stuart Annendorf and James Taylor still our most recent supporters. I guess we are getting the increased view counts, so at least that's something. So anyway, we'll see you all back here for the Friday edition. Hope you have a great Wednesday, and we'll talk to you in a couple days. Bye-bye. <laughs>